Mormon doctrines I prayed about for myself, part one. So when God convicted me to ask any question that I might have to him directly, that he would answer me, it was a little nerve wracking. I decided to start with small questions, start with the milk and graduate to the meat. I started with something small and seemingly unconsequential, which to me was the word of wisdom. I had never been tempted to disobey or partake of any of the forbidden substances. Sometimes maybe I thought it was kind of stupid that God forbade the natural caffeine that he created but allowed synthetic caffeine, but still, I was obedient. So I started there in Doctrine and Covenants 89, and I started with a fervent prayer. I said, God, I'm going in with no preconceptions, negative or positive, just tell me what you want me to know. I wasn't looking for any confirmation bias or any gotchas just to throw it all out. I just wanted God to tell me what he wanted me to know. And I started reading right here in Doctrine and Covenants 89. Here we go, a word of wisdom in verse 2. To be sent greeting, not by commandment or constraint, but by revelation and the word of wisdom. And I think we all know that. I think that we all know that for about the first hundred years, it was really just a suggestion. Because, like God said, it wasn't a commandment or a constraint. I read through the rest of the chapter, but I just kept thinking about this verse. And I was thinking, then why, about a hundred years later, did it get changed to a commandment? But not only a commandment, but a standard of worthiness to be able to enter into the temple. So I wanted to find more information, but I didn't want to look outside of church literature. But here in the Gospel Library, I found this article in Revelations in Context on the Word of Wisdom. It gave some weird justifications about how this was just an incubation period. Like God was saying, hey, this isn't a commandment now, but later it's going to be a judgment of your worthiness. But this was the most interesting part when it says, by the early 20th century, when scientific medicines were more widely available and temple attendance had become a more regular feature of Latter-day Saint worship, the church was ready to accept a more exacting standard of obedience. So apparently, by the early 20th century, by the time man had started creating their own synthetic drugs and medicine, God decided that was the right time to ban all of the natural substances that he made. So I asked God, is that true? Is that what you said? And I felt a pretty strong no. And then this little part right here says, and it would be to eliminate problems like alcoholism. Never mind that this became a commandment around the exact same time as prohibition, but even DNC 89 verse 17 says, mild drinks made of barley are okay.